I'm not sure if people remember, but there was at one point a whole news story about something called the Twitter files, which after Elon Musk purchased Twitter and he tried to back out of it because it was <laughs> quite an elaborate stunt. And now he's lost a t like basically half of the valuation of the company at this point, taking it private. Um, he enlisted Matt Taibbi, journalist, to re basically re reveal the Twitter files of how the, the, the company Twitter, before he bought it, had policies that um, restricted hate speech, things like that. Certain quacks. Yes. Um, the allegations and, and, and like what actually ended up getting uncovered, um, it was a big nothing burger. Uh, and, you know, there yeah. there was a lot of talk about how basically, um, you know, Trump being banned from Twitter at that point was some grave free speech violation. When you see in the files that were released that the like, there were conversations um, behind the scenes about how Trump had violated the Twitter policies over and over again in his time as president, and they let it slide, which they wouldn't do to other accounts because of his stature as president. So, like, many of these conversations directly contradicted the premise that Elon Musk and Matt Taibbi, by extension, were promoting. Now, when Taibbi did all of this reporting, a.k.a., uh, acting as a water boy for a billionaire, he, the, the requirement was that he published this all on Twitter. And Matt Taibbi also has a Substack, right? He has his own newsletter. And after this whole PR exercise disguised as journalism ended, Taibbi was launching his Substack and Elon Musk has some issues with Substack, a rivalry, and that caused a rift between the two. So, the other day, Matt Taibbi publishes p part of the conversation. Go to the quote tweet because this is the the, the second tweet that he. Uh, yep, go to that and then scroll up to that's what he's responding to. So someone asks him at my Matt Taibbi, "Why are your X accounts so invisible? I literally have to switch to my followed timeline to see even see your posts." And Elon, uh, he turns on Elon here, Matt Taibbi. Um, because Elon Musk is uncomfortable around people who aren't afraid of him and wants to prove he can hurt my business instead of just talking to me, e even if it means suppressing access to news he thinks is important. And then Taibi published some of the screenshots of their conversations. I mean, just y you would have hoped that he would have had this kind of level of transparency, you know, when he was actually doing reporting on the billionaire who was his primary source but alas he t he he messaged him in april of last year elon am i being shadow banned oh we went on lockdown after discovering that substack had stolen a massive amount of our data to pre-populate their twitter ripoff uh looks like there's still a blanket search ban should be fixed tomorrow going forward tweets with substack will not appear in for you unless it is paid advertising just like facebook insta etc they will appear in following. And then this is another part of their conversation from a few days later, April of last year. Elon, I've repeatedly declined to criticize you and have nothing to do with your beef with Substack. Oh, please, billionaire, come back to me. I've S'd your D. Is there... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I mean, you could have just gone for it. <laughs> is there a reason why I'm being put in the middle of things? This seems really crazy. And then Elon says... You are dead to me. Please get off Twitter and say on Substack. This is about the Substack thing? Seriously? And so Matt says, since Elon Musk published parts of these conversations, I might as well include others. I was under a blanket search ban at one point, and a lot of my 1.9 million followers still don't see my content. So, like, what's amazing about this, too, is... Taibi's only turning on this total charlatan and this capricious billionaire hack now that it's affected his bottom line because he's bummed that he's not able to promote his Substack where he can monetize this. Like, he did not monetize the Twitter files 
as a way to promote his future monetization of his writing, right? Because that was the trade-off. Elon says you have to exclusively post this on Twitter, and then uh, Taibi says, okay, but clearly this will give me a bigger platform, so then I can launch my Substack, and then that will be the end of it. And now e- Elon's reneged on that part of the bargain. He's shadow banning the link links yeah. to Substack because of some petty feud, and like... Taibi, you know, maybe having a little bit more of a d- discerning eye about your source and his track record of being a lunatic might have helped you before, you know, you swam across the pond with the scorpion on your back. And now he stung you. Sad to see. Yeah, we have this uh, clip from uh, when he was on Joe Rogan uh, talking about, um, uh, sorry, Essing the D of uh, <laughs> of uh, this billionaire who he tried to, uh, you know, ride for, I mean, frankly, shorter than ride. Ride, dot, 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 four. Um, <laughs> it, like of African or fucking psycho that he should have seen this coming from the very beginning. But instead, this is what he was saying to Joe Rogan and all the uh, young men that watched that. And what date was this on? This is February of, February of February 20th. 13th of 23. So this is two months before or those text message or those DMs were sent. It's so strange to get such cut a through uh, like a twenty seconds ahead. I don't, ahead. I don't even care what Rogan says. Who's Elon Musk essential on letting all the information get released? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Elon Musk essentially he, he, he spent forty four billion dollars to become a whistleblower of his own company. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I mean, I. I don't really fully know his motives in, in doing that. Um, I think he's got a pretty a, a developed sense of humor, though. Yeah, uh, and that comes through. I think he <laughs> he gets a kick out of seeing all this stuff come out on Twitter, which used to be the kind of the private stomping ground of all of these whiny journalists. And now here, here Who's the is whiny all this information now? that is just horrifying to all of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a. It, Forty-four billion dollars is a lot to spend on that thrill, but uh, I'm glad he did. Well, he truly <laughs> believes that. Uh, like, like somebody splurging to, you know, do some do like propeller skiing, as if that's the same exact thing. You know, he bought this to dest- either a destroy it or to make it in his image of being a pro-apartheid right wing. Yeah. Uh, racist. The propaganda value of it. And you participated in that uh, in a way that, yeah, like the thing is, is like, so to the extent there's anything remotely interesting in the Twitter files, it's this vague, uh, like, sort of phenomenon of powerful liberal organizations that are ultimately are an extremely democratically re- accountable making moderation decisions on social media and i think that stuff uh, i'm i'm you know generally interested in that stuff when uh dealt with by somebody who's not a like yeah. um who has principles um my solution to that stuff is uh that the workers of the social media platforms have more of a say so if like say facebook employees are aren't happy with trump saying when the looting starts the shooting starts uh they can do something about that and feel empowered to do it and be clear about that's why uh Taibi's solution and like greenwald and all these other people is elon musk buys it a billionaire yeah. comes yeah. in the and saves it all exactly the good billionaire. and you know what i'm going to use the credibility that i've built up over decades of being the rolling stone wall street guy even though i'm pro capitalist the entire time um i'm going to cash that out and i'm going to go on to joe rogan experience and talk about i'm not going to talk about surveillance valley um or previous work that has uh documented the stuff that i'm supposedly the whistleblower we're on um, in way greater depth. I'm not going to talk about that, even though actually, oh, Yasha Levine, the writer of that, um, also a, 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 a exile um, employee. But anyway, I, I know nothing about that. It's like I don't know any of this previous work existed. I'm going to cash the fuck out and get yeah, that's what you did. And so, like, I'm but sure that's what he's mad about is that exactly. his cash out is kind of like not yeah. his gamble, his investment. It failed in Elon is not as profitable as he wanted, and like. I'm so sorry that my heart does not bleed for you. I mean, here is the smallest violin uh, around there. There's a lot more. Uh, I'm, there's a lot more uh, correspondence Matt Taibbi, journalist, has with one of the richest men on earth that he could show to us. I yeah. can. There's probably a lot. I Matt, because here's my. I'll, I'll be a little bit spicy. I think um, when Matt Taibbi was talking all the shit about Matt Walsh's documentary and how great it was, I think he was auditioning. 
Mm-hmm. I think that was an audition because you see that that's when I started noticing Elon Musk in his replies. I'd like to see all that corresponds from that period of time. Yeah, I would like that too. Um, but I, I doubt that's going to get released. I would like no. if, if, if Matt made that turn. Um, but like the idea that a billionaire purchasing a company, a social media company, then handpicking a journalist to release what he wants out there is whistleblowing is honestly an insult to the brave whistleblowers of yeah. the past it's like an embarrassment chelsea manning like um reality winner like edward assange. Snowden, like assange people who have paid severe prices like with their freedom in order to get information out there in the public regardless of like you know i don't know if i like snowden or assange as a person but like the fact that they actually had that. stakes what did they, they had stakes they put their lives on the line for but this elon lost a lot of money that the saudis gave him exactly exactly so honestly it really does uh a disservice to like what a whistleblower means it's counterfeit in the public consciousness yes a type counterfeited it for everyone for his own individual gain and you wallow in it because i'm sure i am i'm not surprised that elon is shadow banning you you know what you the 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 deal you took was to be spotlight boosted by that Afrikaner billion and you like play a little bit more of this Rogan thing just to get an idea of the and and guess what this narrative is still out there Matt there are still people who believe this about Elon Musk and don't hear you at all anymore Mm -hmm. you are done on this topic and the Elon the whistleblower stuff that remains so well done you produce what the billionaire wanted you to censored social media is a threat to democracy he really believes that absolutely yeah, yeah. and yeah. i believe it too absolutely yeah, i just don't have 44 billion dollars right and even if i did i'd be like uh i don't want that heat <laughs> right right yeah i, I, I don't, great I don't think that's there. what i would spend it on but uh no he, he he believes that i think he also um i think he also believes that the credibility of these companies um can only be restored by telling people what what they talk about in private or what they have been talking about you know with the government and that sort of thing yeah so um he might be right about that you know um soccer i guess i I think he is (laughs) (laughs) another question here which you've obviously mentioned before i mean we've talked i think i believe we've talked to mertza hussein about this is like even with that question about like oh we're getting it like getting the insight on people's private conversations etc uh does that apply to narendra modi and his government right does that apply to uh, does that apply to recep tayyip erdogan's government in turkey or does elon say oh we have to apply with their censorship laws that's actually what like oh so it's okay to follow their laws which explicitly censor political dissidents and explicitly censor um yeah. people who have adverse uh you know reactions to things in their governments that's a free speech absolutist uh every kind of other ad position to have on twitter right now is for the state of israel right. <laughs> like who yeah. literally you can't report at cnn essentially about israel yeah. without running through their censor before publishing it. No, no, no i mean he's <laughs> he is using the platform's advertising model to do uh, to, to promote a society, to promote a genocide and their propaganda efforts and like their very repressive free speech standards within Israel, by the way. Uh, we played a clip of a teacher who was put in solitary confinement and then fired from his job for um, speaking sympathetically about people of, in Gaza uh, on his social media page. Now, you know, I, I w- I, I've got to think that that's at the top of Elon Musk's mind as this free speech warrior, except perhaps it was not that sincere. And it's taking the shadow banning and the loss of revenue for Matt to figure that out. Um, that guy who, by the way, as you're saying, uh, saying I'm a uh, Maya Baruchin, um, who lost his job, was publicly threatened by students and teachers alike as he was leaving the school upon being fired for his position. Yeah. And was literally taken mm-hmm. into solitary confinement after reporting to the Israeli police station, shackled and taken into a room where he was left before he was released. Yeah, but free speech. Um, JP from NorCal says, speaking of Twitter shadow bans, it just occurred to me that I haven't seen Emma in my Twitter for you page in a long, long time. Sure enough, I go directly to her profile and see Concerning. tons of her tweets and retweets that never make it to to my feed. Emma, have you noticed lower engagements with your tweets? You seem shadow banned from my algorithm at last. A hundred percent. I've said this in private. After the whole thing happened with uh, with Tim Pool. With Tim Pool and Elon Musk responded publicly to Tim Pool's 
smears and calling me a pedophile and said very disturbing um ever since then i've seen a dramatic dramatic drop off now I'm not going to bitch about it because <laughs> who cares? Not going to make really? it a, a marketing object? I mean, like Twitter's more of an outlet for me to to, exp- to vent my frustrations than anything. I treat it basically like a diary. So, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to cry in, about engagement, but like that, that it would not shock me if that were the case. Um, so poor, poor Matt, poor Matt.